in Hitch. All right, so when you download your game as a member, you would get everything that you see here. You get the large format printing, you get your regular format printing, you get your activity sheets, you get all your game pieces, you get your success poster, and the pitch guide. If you're not a member, you would receive the regular printing option for either letter or A4 and the success poster. Okay, so how to play pumpkin pitch. So this teaches students all about where notes are located in the different octaves on the piano. So middle C is C4, it is the fourth C on the piano. Interestingly enough, the piano's the lowest key used to be C, so that is considered C1. But we now have two notes lower, and depending on your piano, sometimes even beyond that. But this, this would be considered B0 and A0, the two lowest notes on a full-size 88 key piano. So these are landmark notes for F, bass clef F is F3, treble clef G is G4, and middle C, and then some of y'all teach beyond those to C5, C3, and then the C2, and the C6. But we went ahead and showcased on this reference guide that there are notes even beyond that on the piano. So this is a very quick and easy game. Uh, real quick, so the students before they play, they're going to pick, I always have them look at the end result of the pumpkin that is being grown, and they will pick from the pumpkins, and that is the card stack that they will receive. So if a student picks this pumpkin, they're going to get this set of cards. So I have these turned over. The pest cards are turned over so that they can see that they have these two pests to play. But in the stack, when I hand it to the student, these are just all of the notes on the staff, the landmark notes that they're referencing, okay? So if we had, say, three students playing the game, I'll move this down here and I'll have one student here, we'll have another student here, and we'll do this one. So if we have three students playing, they're all going to draw cards all at the same time from the top of their pile. So all three students would flip over their cards and then they determine who has the highest pitch. So in this case, it is the C4 of this player, which is this pumpkin. So they would then lay that down right there and they would claim it. And then these would, would be discarded into, so you would have, a, you would start a discard pile. So each student would have a discard pile. This is their discard pile, okay? And then they would go again. So the students would turn over the cards at the same time if you wanted to count to three and then they reveal. All right, so we have a tie here, but this is the highest pitch. So this student would then get to lay down on C4 and you discard. So you try it again, all three go at the same time. Ooh, in this case, we do have a tie winner. So they would both get to go. So you have C5 for this pumpkin and you have C5 for this pumpkin as well. And you can, you can turn it over this way just to verify, like you, you can have it either way, it really doesn't matter. And so this student would discard, that goes up here. Now, I'll show you where the bugs come in, where the pests come in. Let's go ahead and do another round. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so they're all three they would all three get to put their C6 down on the board, but say one student wants to just claim it and not have the other students get it. So this student could say, oh, I'm using my pest before anyone starts laying it down. And then let's see, it would be this pumpkin would get to lay down their C6. And then these would have to be discarded. So basically it trumps whatever is whoever the winner is if a student plays their pest card 
The student playing the pest card ins is an instant winner. They get to lay whatever pitch. Now it could be the very lowest pitch, which is actually um, strategically, as we talk about game strategy, that's when you really actually really want to use it because the chance of tying um, and not having a higher pitch from somebody else when you are using this lowest note, the C2. So I encourage students to at least keep one pest ready for when, if, if they have not filled this position yet. So once a student has played one pest bug, they, they can't play it again, but they can at, on another round play their other pest bug. So each student can have the opportunity to play, um, kind of to, to be an instant winner, but they've got to throw their pest bug down quickly before the person who has one has laid on their row. Once it's been laid on the row, it, the pest can't claim it at that point. So you can always encourage your students to do these during the lesson after the game has been played, or you can send the activity sheets home. And of course, don't forget to celebrate with the success poster. These make for great social media posts in your studio, as well as when you send the lesson notes via email to the parents, I always like to include a nice picture with the student who did win. So the first student to get all of their pitches first is the winner. So I hope you enjoy playing Pumpkin Pitch. Thanks for joining us at Music Game Club. You can find printable and digital music theory games and other teacher resources at musicgameclub.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Tag us on social media so we can celebrate with you your student success in playing music theory games.